Good day there once again viewers, this is your mate Kamikaze78 here coming to you guys with some more Planet Side 2 content. Today guys we're going to be continuing our series of class guides for Planet Side 2 by discussing the Jack of All Trades on the battlefield, another very important cog in the wheel of many aspects of this game. The Engineer. Ladies and gentlemen, Planet Side 2 has been seeing some huge spikes in player numbers lately, and as on the cherry on top, it has now been rated a 90% approval rating recently on Steam, which is absolutely incredible. So with those player spikes, we're going to be seeing some new players, and some who have returned after a long service leave, if you will. So I wanted to take some time to return back to this series, and get back to the classes that drive the combat on the battlefield. So in this video, we will go over a quick overview of the Engineer itself discuss the gear that is available to the class, go over some rapid-fire tips and tricks for the class, and lastly, go over some of my loadouts that I use for the class on a daily basis. So, without further ado, let's get into an overview of the Engineer class in Planet Side 2. So, the Engineer. I'm sure you've all heard me mention the term Jack of All Trades earlier in the video, but guys, I meet it. This class is very much the Jack of All Trades in Planet Side 2. The class that arguably has the most flexibility and options to either focus on a particular role or cover many at once. The class comes with the all important role of repairing allied vehicles and max suits with the nano repair tool, which considering the combined arms nature of this game is a critical role to the advancement of any armor column or max push in your faction. In addition to this, the engineer also has the key role of keeping allies armed to the teeth with their ammo pack that they can drop at any time. And that right there is what the engineer can do with only two slots of their loadout. This class also has the most diverse selection of tools, grenades, and utility slots available in the game among all the classes. And that allows you to really create four, five, maybe even six or more high level engineer loadouts that all have a unique role to accomplish. Whether that be a dedicated tank crew loadout, a grenadier loadout, or some bastion style loadout that's designed to act as a sole point of defense that no one can get around. It is all possible here, and we're going to discuss it in this video. But let's go over some of the options that we have to make the class happen and discuss exactly what this class can equip in all of its slots. Let's kickstart things off here with the Engineer's Nano Repair Kit, the catalyst for the Engineer's ability to keep the collection of stuff in working order no matter what gets thrown its way. The tool can be used literally on anything mechanical in the battlefield. Vehicles, equipment like Engineer turrets and barriers, max suits and base turrets, generators and terminals, everything you can use to repair with this thing. Simply Simply point the device towards the intended recipient and hold the left click on your mouse to punch out a selection of holographic nanites to keep things in working order. Just keep in mind that the device can be overheated and will result in a lengthy cooldown period if you do this. Now each level of the upgrade that you can put into the tool increases the speed in which you can repair an item and also increases the overheat threshold each level as well. However, one additional thing that this little thing can do is deconstruct enemy tank mines. Now normally, I just shoot tank mines as it's a bit faster and a little bit more efficient, but there are times where doing that can kill half a platoon that is sitting on a capture point. So, just use a bit of common sense here, sometimes it's better to properly deconstruct your tank mines. Next up, we find ourselves at the ability slot, where we have a collection of deployable items available to the engineer, mainly orientated around defense and choke point holding. The ability slot here allows for you to equip a mana turret of either anti-vehicle or anti-infantry focus, a hard light barrier, and the spitfire turret. Now, we may as well start off with the first option of the batch that you will own by default, the anti-infantry mana turret. This is a rapid fire, relatively accurate turret that sports infinite ammo and runs on a heat mechanic, and the accuracy of the turret does find itself decreasing the longer you hold the trigger. The turret also features a shield that blocks all incoming damage, but the feet of the turret and your head are slightly exposed, meaning that a well-placed rocket launcher or a sniper round will ruin your day on this turret. The other manable turret that you will have access to after dropping some certs on it, 1000 to be exact, is the AV Mana Turret, which is a wire-guided missile
missile launcher that will follow your crosshair until it hits a target, sporting a long yeah. cooldown period after every shot. This turret here is a lot clunkier, but also features no protection, so if you piss off the wrong tank, they may decide to throw a couple of big old tank shells your way, so be ready to jump off the turret in those situations. Your cert lines for these independent turrets are going to reduce the cooldown between shots for the AV turret and increase the overheat threshold on the anti-infantry turret. The Spitfire turret is also an automated turret that tracks and deals light damage to targets that find themselves within its range, which is 50 meters. If anything, this turret is sort of just to, you know, kind of place it down here and use it as an area denial kind of deal. It's not going to kill a lot of people, it's just going to act as sort of a deterrence, if anything. Each upgrade down the Spitfire turret line, you're going to decrease the cooldown period for the time that it will take you to place a new turret down after you place the previous one down. The hard light barrier is a very simple and is a one-time purchase, no upgrades required, and is just a deployable barrier that blocks incoming light projectiles, but is susceptible to explosive damage. Just use it as a way to control those choke points a little bit harder. Now, as we said in the overview before, the Engineer also has the ability to keep allies stocked up on the munitions front as well, and this is where the ammo pack comes into play. This ability is actually in its own slot, so it doesn't compete with any of the other abilities to be present on the battlefield, which is a nice change the devs made a very long time ago. All you need to do is press F, which is your standard ability key, and bada bing bada boom, you're dishing out ammo. Now this can be a real sir maker for you if you choose to place it in the right area, like in a choke point where you have a lot of allies exchanging a lot of ammo with enemies en masse. It recharges one magazine per second of standard infantry weaponry, with rocket rifle and rocket launchers receiving ammo every five seconds. It's also worth noting that ammo packs do not discriminate between factions. If I told you that an NC soldier could resupply off a TR ammo pack, you would call me crazy. But it actually can happen, so fun little bit of trivia for you. Each upgrade of the ammo pack works on increasing the lifespan of the ammo pack, the range in which it dishes out ammo, maxing out to a 6 minute lifespan and a 7 meter ammo range, and the final upgrade also allows for you to have two ammunition packs deployed at once. So. Yeah, you can see how this can turn into a real cert printer really quickly. As far as the utility slots are concerned, you've got access to your standard suite of suit slots being nanoweave armor, grenade bandolier, flak armor, which is certed out to the max by default for this class when you start a new character, ammunition belt, and the advanced shield capacitor. In addition though, the engineer can also run mine carrier and demolitions pouch, which increases the carrying capacity of your anti-personnel or anti-vehicle mines, or your C4 sticks respectively to give you some little extra explosive firepower per life. Grenade Bandolier, Mine Carrier, and Advanced Shield Capacitor are probably among my favorite options for the Engineer, but more on that later when we get into the loadouts. When we arrive at the grenade slots, the Engineer sports some rather unique grenade options that teeter very drastically from being incredibly support orientated to... Yeah, look, absolute means for plenty of death and destruction. And we may as well start out with that because it sounds more entertaining. The Sticky Grenades is the first of the Engineer's grenade options, which can absolutely create some of the most chaotic scenes on the battlefield as of right now, because as the name suggests, this is a grenade that is coated in an adhesive layer that, when stuck to an enemy, will bypass all of their flak armor and pretty much guaranteeing a kill. Stick this to a max and watch him fall back into his allied engineers and medics for some pretty stupid kill feeds. Um, I've seen clips of people who have stuck grenades onto allies and they've retreated back into a spawn room. Yeah, you can imagine the chaos. <laughs> Just be sure not to stick it to allies because I'm sure you can imagine how many, you know, friendships you'll sour with that move. Um, yeah. On the opposite end of the spectrum, you have the Nano Repair Grenade, which will heal 50 HP per second for 10 seconds of all vehicles and max suits that are within a 10 meter range of the blast radius. To make things a little bit more interesting, the grenade will also stick to allied vehicles and max suits for some nice mobile repair work on a more crowd control level, so a nice thing to insert into there as well. And finally, when we get to the utility slots here, this class also has a very... Uh, elaborate collection. We not only have access to our standard restoration slash medical kits, we also have C4 and our auxiliary shield, but then you can also choose from reserve hard light barrier, anti-personnel mines, and tank mines. 
there is lots to choose from here and it really will depend on where you find yourself at any given time and to decide from there on what you should be using and when. As an added note, one of the engineer's most iconic abilities is the form of a passive ability called Quick Shield Recovery that recharges the engineer's shield faster than those of any other classes. And it also has an ability called Aircraft Synergy that heals aircraft that the engineer is sitting in while they're out of combat. So, yeah, the Engineer is probably the class with the most amount of customizability in the game right now, hence the long list of tools and abilities that we needed to go through there. Sorry that took so long, guys, but what did you expect? This is the Engineer we're talking about here. But now, let's go over some of the tips and tricks we have to share behind Engineer gameplay. Tip number one, when you can, search into the advanced shield capacitor. Considering that you already have an incredibly shortened shield recharge rate with your passive ability, being able to take this fast shield recharge characteristic, if you will, further means you're going to have less downtime and you're going to be able to just really become a menace on the battlefield on both of a supportive and an offensive front. The engineer is known for its short downtime and this is how you sort of achieve it. Tip number two, remember to throw ammo. Considering the amount of tools you already have access to, it can be really easy to forget to press that F key sometimes to get ammo out to those who need it. Resupplying allies is one of the easiest way to make certain in this game, so get amongst it. Tip number three, on the note of the ammo packs, try to deploy your ammo in a location where ammo packs are not already present. While yes, you will still get a share of the resupply XP if you place it alongside an ally ammo pack, you will be much more useful to your fellow planet men if you put it in locations that are not already receiving some good old resupplying. Tip number four, I promise, last tip relating to ammo packs, but if you're coming from a heavy assault or combat medic background, it can be damn near tempting to press F mid-combat to deploy what would normally be your heavy shield or your nano regen device. Don't do it here. If you're gonna let an enemy kill you, don't give them some complimentary ammo to boot. It's one of the most embarrassing ways to die in the game. Tip number five, whenever you're using a vehicle, you should be playing an engineer without a doubt. There is nothing worse than having the ability to save your vehicle from being a flaming wreckage, but not being able to because you forgot to play the engineer class. Play engineer whenever you're in a vehicle, and this should go for whenever you're gunning a vehicle as well. If an outfit mate or a squad member asks you to come gun a vehicle with them, pick the engineer class. Tip number six, in addition to that, if you are going to get into vehicles, then definitely search into the nano repair grenades. While they don't repair at a rate that will replace your repair tool, they can be an absolute godsend in a stitch up of a battle. And if you need to get your vehicle quickly out of a hotspot, quickly jump out, attach one of these, and then keep driving to a safe place. The point is, they've saved my ass on countless occasions, and they are a nice little supplement of repair towards your vehicle. Tip number seven, on the topic of grenades, I would recommend not inserting into the sticky grenade until you have become a little bit more familiar with grenade physics and mechanics in the game. They can be fun, but if you get it wrong and stick it to our ally, well, as we said before, it's all over really fast and you're gonna make more enemies than friends. So in saying that, I wouldn't really invest in them early on until you get to practice in with the standard grenades. Tip number eight, in our combat medic guide, some of you may remember the fact that we discussed that while yes, you are a medic, you should also focus using your incredible offensive abilities too. With the engineer, you do have some great combat abilities, but you do need to play just that touch more passively in the grand scheme of things. An engineer's power comes from their turrets and deployables, so you should be focusing on supporting the team with some great choke point crowd control abilities. You do not have assault rifles here backing you, so try not to lead the charge with this class as much as you may do with others. Tip number nine, this especially applies in the event of a max crash. Know your place and know that you should be sitting back with the repair tool in your hot little hands pretty regularly. Tip number 10, in saying that, whenever you are repairing some kind of item of any kind, do your best not to overheat it. I promise you when I say that your repair tool will be active a whole lot longer and see less downtime if you can keep it from overheating and space your repairing bursts accordingly if you will. Tip number 11, and this is actually a tip that comes from community member Jay Walker, who suggests investing in the AM7 Archer, and I honestly agree with him. While yes, I've always been an advocate for not buying weapons early on, the Archer is unique in the sense that it gives the engineer a great counter to enemy max suits and some light 
quick response damage to vehicles. While I would still say that you should search into your abilities first, definitely keep the Archer on your mind because it's a nice, unique weapon to the Engineer that is a ton of fun. Tip number 12, and the last one I have for the Engineer here today, when you're using your Mana Turret, don't remain too tunnel visioned. When placing it, consider the line of sights enemies will have on you from flaking routes, and try to position it where it's hard for enemies to get behind you. Also, try to jump off of it every, uh, every few kills and reassess the situation. Try to find out which directions enemies are coming from and reposition accordingly. And that right there are some tips and tricks for making the best of your engineer gameplay while you are starting out. Now, as per always, there is probably something I missed and considering the diverse range of capabilities available to the engineer, I almost certainly missed something. So be sure to get in the comment section down below and share your personal tips and tricks so we can turn this video into a bit of an asset for new players to learn how to use the engineer. But I also want to take some time now to go over some loadouts that I've managed to conjure up for this class over the years and you know give you guys some ideas on how you can search into this class for the future. So firstly, and rather quickly, let's have a look at my vehicle operator loadout. Now this here is an engineer loadout that is designed to sit in vehicles and when the time requires it, pump out some mean repairing capabilities. I would recommend running an SMG like the AF4 Cyclone, the Aerodyne SX-5 or the SMG-46 Armistice, all of which are great little damage dealers for quick reaction situations, such as dealing with those pesky C4 Fairy Light Assaults that try to get a little bit too close to comfort to your vehicle. Now the real magic here comes with your nano repair grenades and the grenade bandolier giving you that little extra kick of repairs in situations where things are starting to get really sticky. I would also recommend taking proximity mines as well as a spitfire turret. So if, big if here, but if you find a nice hill to sit on with your tank to shell some stuff with, the mines can potentially protect your rear against some clever infantry and if worse comes to worse, the Spitfire turret can act as an early warning beacon to let you know that something is sneaking up on you. Implant wise, it does depend on the vehicle you're operating. I personally run logistics specialists to allow for people to spawn into the vehicle directly and then ransack for a tick of ammo and 10% of health going towards my vehicle if I kill an enemy vehicle within 50 meters. Now, I run a fairly aggressive Vanguard playstyle, so these implants work well for me. However, Sweeper HUD is also a good pick, as is Ammo Printer if you're going to be running an aircraft. But let's just say that you want to stick your feet on the ground more often and get in the thick of it with your infantry buddies. Okay, let's talk about some more infantry focused outfits for the engineer. The first loadout I have to share here today is called Guardian, and this is the immovable object of my collection here. The engineer that will set up shop and simply never move. The magic of this loadout primarily sits in the anti-infantry mana turret and the corresponding implants to make it a beast while you're using it. However, I would still recommend taking a CQC orientated carbine like the GD7F, the LC2 Lynx, or the Serpent the E92, or even a shotgun to deal with those pesky flankers who try to get behind you. The reserve hard light barrier can also be used to slow down enemies from pushing through those pesky flanking routes, or you can actually use it as an additional barrier to protect your turret's feet from. But yes, when we combine the infantry mana turret with Jockey and the robotics technician implants, you become an absolute tank on the turret. Let me explain. When Jockey reaches rank 4 on the turret, it will give you a bonus 50% shield health to you while you are riding your mana turret, taking you up to a total of 750 respective shield health. Now in addition to that, Robotics Technician gives you an additional 25% resistance to incoming damage to all non-mine deployables that you own within 15 meters, which includes your turret. But that resistance also applies to an engineer when they are riding the turret too, which is absolutely insane. You can take sniper headshots at close quarters combat with that kind of buff and still be alive after it. And on top of that, if you find yourself an additional bonus where the turret will automatically repair itself even under fire when you get the robotics technician implant to max rank. And because you're feeling a little bit of extra dirtiness about it, I would also recommend taking flak armor to ensure that any pesky grenades that get under you are merely going to tickle a little bit. This is a disgusting loadout, but holy shit, is it some of the most fun you can have in this game when holding choke points. Now, another common loadout, but incredibly satisfying option for the engineer loadout is the Grenadier build, which is a build focused on sending as much damage saturation downrange as possible. 
How do we do this? Well, this time around the primary synergy comes from a particular subset of weapons and the ammo pack. Namely, the S-Class of the default carbines that are available to each faction. You see guys, the Gorse Compact S, the Track 5S and the Stolstice SF all have access to underbow grenade launchers, which when combined with the ammo pack allows you to keep a constant stream of high explosive grenades flying down range and suppressing the ever-loving crap out of any poor sod that is on the other end of your fire. Normally, the grenade launchers and the weapons that they happen to be attached to for that matter are a little underwhelming because you can only go into battle with three rounds of HE underbarrel good to go. But with your own quote-unquote infinite ammo box at your disposal, Oh, the problem kind of solves itself, doesn't it? <laughs> In addition, because those underbarrel grenades weren't enough, we also have the grenade bandolier suit slot, allowing us to take a total of four sticky grenades into battle. These are fantastic in those close, tight-knit choke points like engagements because all you need to do is lay one of these down range and if they stick an enemy they're likely to retreat into their allied clump of medics and fellow engineers causing some absolute carnage. The use of the hard life barrier, the med kits, as well as the survivalist slash athlete implants are all about improving this class of survivability considering you're going to be dishing out a lot of damage, expect to receive a lot of that in return. If you wanted to augment this loadout a little bit into something just that a little bit more evil, you can also change out the underbarrel HE launcher for an underbarrel smoke launcher and run a thermal optic to cloud an area in smoke and then use your thermal optic to shoot through it as clear as day. It makes for some fairly chaotic scenes. And on top of that guys, there are plenty of variations of this loadout you can create for just standard frontline assault engineers that are designed for holding points and supporting the squad. The most popular implant combination for a class of this style has always been survivalist and bionics just to further expand on how powerful the shield for the class is. But the bionics implant being an exceptional, I'm not going to draw up a loadout with that implant in mind, considering that a lot of the feedback I got in my last class guide was surrounding the fact that I used an exceptional implant for a class in a video that is primarily orientated towards newer players. So, there you go. Wow, bloody hell, that was a long commentary to record. And I gotta tell you guys, this is a hell of a class to cover. There are a lot of aspects of the engineer class, a lot of different abilities, a lot of roles it can take up. So I knew this was gonna be a long video and I hope you guys were able to get through it. I'm definitely gonna put some timestamps at the front of the video that you guys would have already seen already to help guide you through where what sections you need most of the video to understand anyway guys if you enjoyed today's video a backing of the like button would be greatly appreciated and if you find yourself new to the channel consider backing the subscribe button whilst you're at it to keep up to date with all content which i'm releasing in the long run as always feedback is appreciated in the comment section down below guys and all my social media links as well as the channel membership join link if you want to support the channel a little bit further are all located in the description down below once again guys hope you enjoyed today's video peace out and i'll see you guys all in the next one. Take care guys. Have a good one.